Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, there's, there's an, an echo. echo. Good morning. Can you guys still hear me? I plugged something into a, a port. Can you hear me at all? <laughs> I know, Gwen. There was a lot of chatter, so I don't know if you guys were able to hear me. Can you hear this? Get a drink, Nisi. I have a new microphone. You can probably hear me chew. Gwen, can you let me know if you can hear me? I love that this is live and this will be on YouTube. So you can hear. Okay, good. Is it echoey at all? I won't pick up the crinklies anymore. If I unmute my part, nope, nope, can't do that. Well, how is everybody this morning? Gwen, how are you feeling? Nisi, when you get back, how are you feeling? I don't have my glasses either. You see the little bit of sunshine coming in through the window behind me there? It's not terribly sunny out. We got snow, snow last night. Good morning, is it Tamara or Tamara? Thank you for these videos helping me get back into crocheting. Oh, you're welcome, I'm so glad. Thank you for joining us. Now guys, let me know as well, is the video glitchy at all because we did get snow last night and I noticed that my banner running across the bottom of the page is a little bit glitchy. Let me know how things are looking on your end. I don't know if I know how to fix it. L and L Homestead. I love that. Beautiful, sunshiny morning with high of 69 today's day tomorrow. You know, um, I don't even know if I need to have these earbuds in because they give me feedback. So I'm just going to talk and hope you guys can hear me okay. Uh, it was in the 70s on Sunday. It was sunshiny and beautiful. And here it is Thursday and we have snow. Tamara. Okay, Tamara, thank you. I will do my best to remember that. If you know anything at all about me, you know that I have a terrible time not only remembering names, but remembering how to enunciate them. So you'll just please bear with me. I will do my best to remember. Um, if you know what chemo brain is, just know I still suffer from it years out. So sometimes I just, my brain doesn't function correctly. Wind gusts. Yes. I know that those can be. So shall we jump in and start our block number four? Is everybody ready? Um, I do want to tell you guys, I know that the first three blocks with those basic stitches that we get started with can be a little bit maybe redundant feeling. 
Um, but I assure you, after this block, because it's another uh, stitch to really get us back into our foundations for those who are starting back up again, like Tamara, after this stitch, we'll be going a little bit more into the textured stitches. It'll be a little bit more challenging and exciting. You're ready now that you can see. Okay, Nisi. Um, I want to touch on a couple of things before we get started because they are of, uh, of importance to take note. So I'm going to take myself down and just have the crochet cam up there. Can you guys still hear me if I do that? Can you still hear me? Wasn't sure if you guys could hear me when I did that. Let me see if I can find a way. I want to make it so that I am. I want just the crochet large and me little. I just want to be little. So when I took myself down, you guys could still hear. Okay, hopefully you guys can still hear me if I do it this way. So um, somebody give me a quick thumbs up. Can you hear me? Papa, can you hear me? Wonderful. Okay, good. That's what I want to know. So let's back up a couple squares and just go over a couple of things real quick. Let's do some housekeeping. For our single crochet block, we already know that both Nisi and I have the unique gift of crocheting very tight. So our first block was a little bit smaller than the other blocks. So I wanted to share with you that what we discussed last week was I needed to make my block a little bit bigger. So what I did was I took off the edging row number two and I did another row of edging number one. So it extended my block in all four directions, just one more row. Then I put my row two back on, keeping in mind that when you add another row in the center here, you have to make sure that you account for that and make sure you've got the 25 in between. So that's what I've done to extend this a little bit bigger so I don't have to worry about it, you know, being too stretchy when we put our pieces together. Okay, so there's our block number one. Then we did block number two. And as you can see, this is the size. This is the size we ultimately want our blocks to be. It is not, you know, our, our patterns say they need to be approximately seven inches before you put your edging on. So about here to here is going to be about seven inches in between here. And... That's approximate. Once you start doing your stitches, if you find that they're seven, seven and a half, where's my little tape measure? It's just so that you don't feel like you need to stick to that. It's just really more of a guideline than anything. And of course, my tape measure is stuck underneath my, my stand here. So let me see. If I were to go from right here, this is the edge of where my edging starts to right here you can see i am at about seven and three quarter inches before i add my edging on it's because of my tension it's because of how i crochet there's nothing wrong with this and this is something that nisi and i were discussing last week she said doing block number three her block was too big and she had to compensate we're going to talk about how to compensate if your blocks are getting a little bit out of uh, gauge compared to your prior blocks so if you can see here, my block's almost nine inches by the time I get my edging on. And that's okay. I don't want you guys to worry about that. What I want you to what I want you to focus on is just the uniformity between your squares. So here is what I'm going to gauge all of my squares off of. I want to make sure that they're approximately that size. Now, when I take my block number one and I compare it, even though I added that extra row, it falls just a teeny tiny little bit short, but it's not enough that I'm going to worry about it. This one is going to be okay. Just a little bit of discrepancy, but really, it's really not enough for me to worry about. Okay. Yes, yeah, see, Nisi, so we're going to be okay with that. Now, here's block three that we did last week. 
And I'm going to remove block one. I'm going to set that aside. So we have block two down here is block three. So when you get your blocks done, before you add your border, just kind of lay it over a previous block. See how close it is? I mean, look, we're close. We are there. Now, and I'm not calling you out, Nisi. We're just using this as a, um, uh, a, a learning teaching moment. So Nisi and I were conversing back and forth last week, and she said before she got her border on, her block three was too big. And she had to frog it a couple of times. And I know that that was frustrating for her um, because I know how frustrated I get when I have to frog as well. So what she did is she went down to a, uh, a size G hook. And so she did this block in G. And that made it so that it equaled out. So it matched up very well with her second block that was done with an H. If you have to do that, that's okay. Whatever you have to do to obtain your gauge while you're working, let's say that you're working on block number three and, you know, get a few rows in. I'm going to try to hold this down here at the bottom. Just get a few rows in and then hold it up to a prior block that you know is what you want and see if you're within those guidelines. You're going to be okay. Just It just takes just a little bit extra, um, a little thought and playing around a little bit until you make sure that you're where you need to be. So thankfully, Nisi had the forethought to say, you know what, I'm going to go down a size and I'm going to see if that works. And it worked very well for her. So if anybody is experiencing that, use a 4.5. Okay, good deal. Um, just, just keep that in mind if you're having a little bit of trouble having this gauge up. It doesn't mean that anything is wrong that you're doing with your crochet or anything. It just means you just have to make some adjustments. And isn't that the way that life goes? We have to adjust things every once in a while. Isn't it amazing, Nisi, that that can happen? You just, uh, just that little bit of a half of a millimeter can make such a difference. So I'm going to set these aside now because I want to talk about one more thing. Um. For those of you who chain very, very tightly, you know, for our projects, for our squares, we're using the H hook, the 5.0 millimeter hook. If you chain tightly, you know, you can go up a size just for your chains, just for your starting chain when we start. So if you chain very, very tightly, and it's just a habit that you can't get out of. And you find that when it comes time to work back in the chain, let me grab something here. I've got so many little things here. If you find it difficult to uh, either work in the back loop or in the bar in the back, like Nisi likes to do, if it's a little bit too tight at the beginning of your project, you know, you can go up a size. You can go up a size on your hook and just do your chains. Then switch back to the hook that you know that's going to work for your gauge. And then you can work along that chain to get your project started. Makes it a little easier for that little bit of smaller hook to go into the chain then. So if you're experiencing that, just know it's okay to make those adjustments. You're going to be all right. It'll work good. All right. Having said that, I just want to welcome everybody. Um, I have my coffee. I hope you're sitting in a beautifully relaxed place and just ready to spend the next, you know, 45 minutes with me or so while we do our next square. I hope you've had the opportunity to go to the tutorial that I put up. You know, one more thing before we get started, because of glitchy situations and sound situations, I'm wondering, and you guys let me know in the chat. Do you want to continue going live like this? I love it. I don't mind doing it. I don't mind setting it up. I'm getting a little bit better at setting things up now. But uh, do you want to continue going this way with the lives? Or do you want me to actually film the tutorial ahead of time and then set it up as a premiere? Then I can still chat with everyone during the premiere. And you can crochet along. Um, and then it won't be so glitchy. Or do you guys want to keep it live? I want it to be the atmosphere that you guys want, that you enjoy the most. And I will do whatever you guys want. So let me know in the chat while we get started. Do you want it to stay live on StreamYard like this? Or would you prefer that I actually crochet the entire block and then set it up at this time as a premiere so we can still chat? 
Oh my gosh, that coffee is so good. All right. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put our banner up to get started on block number four. For those of you who were able to watch the tutorial for our stitch, you know that today we're working on a treble crochet. Premiere would be great. Would you put the row instructions in the description? Yes, I would. Whatever works for you, I think live gives a more personal feel to it. Whatever you guys want. I just want it to be because like I'm worried right now because I can see it's a little glitchy and that makes me nervous. But I know that you guys are going to be able to follow along. We're going to be okay. So let's we'll just wing it until we get a definitive yes, this is working or no, it's not. So but I, I appreciate any and all feedback, please, guys. I want what's what's best for you guys. I want it to be enjoyable. I don't want it to be where you don't show up because things are glitchy. So working on block number four, you're going to use the same color you used last week. That is your color A. Whatever you used last week, that is your color A. You're going to use it for this block again. And guess what? We're using it next week as well. Um, our A color is going to be very popular for these three weeks. Popular? Popular. I want to be popular. Okay. Oh, get on there, you little stinker. So with color A, we're going to loosely chain 28. And I'm singing in my head and already lost count. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. So here we have our beginning chain line here of 28 to get started on our next block. Oh, good. Tamara's still here. We didn't lose her. I was hoping we hadn't lost her. I hadn't seen her in a little bit here in the chat. I'm glad you're here, Tamara. And Nisi and Gwen, and I know somebody else is in here. Maybe it's me. <laughs> Number says four in the top corner. Okay. I'll give you guys a little bit of time to get caught up there. Did my nails in a different color for you guys. Ooh, it's sparkly. I hope it's not distracting. It's like, like a fishing lure. It's very bright. Okay, I'm going to change our banner so we can move on to row number one. Ooh, there it is. All right, so for row number one, we're going to treble crochet in the fifth chain from the hook and then in each chain across. Now, um, I like to work in the back loop. I know Nisi likes to work in the bar in the back. Whatever works best for you, you do that. And let's get started. So the fifth chain from the hook. So we have one, two, three, four. Here's our fifth chain right here. We're going to treble crochet, which is yarn over twice. I'm going to go into that back loop of that chain. Yarn over and pull my yarn through. So I have four loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two. I have three chain, three loops left on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two. I have two loops left on my hook. And one more time, yarn over, pull through two. And that is our treble crochet. Treble, triple means we've done that action of yarn over and pull through two three times. Good morning, Denise. Denise Passel, my neighbor. Welcome in. Now I want to tell you guys that 
as per our instructions, it says we're going to end up with a total of 25 stitches. This treble crochet that we just did in the fifth chain, that's actually our second stitch. Our chain four that we skipped here, that's actually going to count as our first treble crochet right there. So this is our second one here. And we're going to put treble crochets all the way across. And so when we come back and count, we will have 25. So working in this next chain right here, we're going to complete another treble crochet. So yarn over two times into our next stitch, our next chain there. Yarn over and pull through two. We have four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two one time. Yarn over, pull through two two times and yarn over pull through two the third time completing another treble crochet and I'm just going to keep working down towards the end remember in these crochet alongs you can uh, go back and replay if you need to you do not need to crochet at the same uh, speed or rate that I do um, these will be made available to you you can go back at any time and get caught up and just work at your own pace. This is not a race. I want this to be a relaxing time for you. And I want this to be an enjoyable project. I don't want you to feel pressured. I don't want you to feel frustrated. You'll see that this block will work up faster than our last block because, again, these treble crochets, look how long they are. They're probably like an inch long, where our double crochets were a little shorter, our half double crochets were a little shorter than that, and then our single crochets were really little. They took forever, didn't they? Treble crochets, a nice tall stitch, your project will go a little faster. The one thing I don't necessarily care for about the treble crochet is you do have the gaps. But again, this is a sampler heirloom afghan with 63 different stitches, 63 different stitch patterns. And this just happens to be block four. My work was curling a little bit. I couldn't see if I got that last little loop on there. Now, for those of you who have been crocheting for a while, um, you may not have needed the stitch tutorials because these are, again, our basic stitches. But I'd like to encourage you to at least um, glance over the next tutorials that start coming out so that you have. Um, you have just the basis of that stitch pattern in your memory bank when we get together to do the block. They're going to be fun. I'm excited. I showed you the one block that we'll be doing in a, in a few weeks, and it had that really fun puff stitch in it, and they look like little cabbages in a row in a garden. If you were looking down from an airplane or a drone into a garden, it just looked like a bunch of little cabbages it was really cute and I was so happy when somebody said that because now I cannot get that image out of my brain <laughs> I look at it as I uh, practice things and try to set things up and make sure everything goes smoothly for our lives and I had those little cabbages on there I thought oh gosh darn it I cannot get that out of my mind they do look like little cabbages my biggest challenge is doing the border on the sides of my squares where you don't have clear stitches to go into and you have to find that space. But I'm getting better doing this cow. That is a challenge. That is a challenge, Nisi. And you know, it it it's like I said when we did our our double crochet pattern, you know, they're not evenly spaced. That's why I like to fold mine in half so I kind of know boom boom. Where do we go there? But I like, you know, I can look at this as a flaw where these are here because we didn't have clear defined stitches to work through. 
but I like to look at it as it just looks like a little filigree lacy pattern that I ended up creating just by trying to find a place to put my stitches. So I understand exactly what you're saying, Nisi. We may experience that more as we go through the blocks, but I try to look at, you know what, we are all imperfectly perfect. And I, I have to just look at that as just being a really nice, beautiful imperfection. So look at it that way. Just like we look at our little puffs as little cabbages. Um, because otherwise you'll drive yourself nuts if you focus on the imperfection. Just focus on the fact that they, they look like little filigree. And if anybody gives you any grief when they look back at your blanket, you tell them it was intentional. And that's the way the pattern works. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, girl, you know I can't wait for that stitch. I know. I love the puff and the bobble stitch. Such fun stitches. They really are. My issue too for Handley says, Gwen, this one will be a bigger challenge because of the long treble stitch. Yes, it will. But again, as we divide our work, when we fold it in half and figure out where to put 12, where to put 13, um, you're going to end up with some bigger gaps, but it'll all work out. And if you have to frog a little bit as you start your first row of that border, it's okay. Only you will know unless you tell everybody when they look at your beautiful uh, squares, if, if they say something, again, you can say this was intentionally planned. Or if it's another crochet uh, enthusiast, you can say, oh, girl, you don't know how much I struggled with the border on this square. But I made it work because I didn't give up. Because I have the heart of a tiger. <laughs> I made it work. I didn't give up. It's not going to be that bad, I promise. Look at me just jaw jabbering here, and it's taken forever just to even get to where we're almost to the end of row one. You guys are probably already there. Here's our last chain. We're going to do a treble crochet in that very last chain. Okay. There's row one. How many did I end up with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Yay, just where I need it. Um, my only wish is that we, we, we I wish we could do <coughs> more patterns per week. Why? Because I thought to myself, how cool would it be if I could give this to my daughter for their anniversary in May? Oh my goodness, Gwen. Oh, darling, I don't know if I have the strength. <laughs> <clears throat> you know what you could do, Gwen, is you could use this basis. Oops, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Let me go back where I was while I'm talking. I mean, you could use some of these stitches that we've already done. You could make X number of squares. You could go ahead and crochet or sew them together and have it. Uh, you can find some other patterns if you'd like ahead of time. I don't know how we would get 63 done um, in that amount of time. I'm, I, I, am, I apologize. But you know what you can do um, if you wanted to make any blanket at all or any square. You can make the squares bigger if you wanted to. This one we started with 28. If you wanted to make it a little bit bigger, you could do bigger squares. But I just don't know that we would be able to get all of those squares. And I understand what you're saying, though. And I was thinking about it. And it's at 63 at one a week. This is going to be a year-long project plus for us. But I'm hoping you'll all stick with me. I think, um, imagine when you have this heirloom blanket and you can tell your friends, you know what? I spent over a year making this for, uh, for my family so I can pass it down for the generations. So... Uh, nothing worth doing is, how, how does it go? Things that are worth doing are worth doing well, and you don't have, want to get through it quickly. 
Um, by the way, y'all, I've been writing down the instructions on a Word document. If anyone wants a copy of it when we are all done, let me know and I will send it to you. Well, Nancy, that's wonderful. That is so, so thoughtful of you. Thank you. And Nisi says, I already plan to make another one. That is great. Um, Gwen says, I cannot read a pattern for the life of me. That's why I like tutorials. Well, you know, uh, Gwen, I just recorded a video because Casey over at Ormsby Farms, he really wants to do this and he needs to start at the very, very beginning, like with a slip stitch, slip knot. And so I'm doing some very, very beginning ones. I can continue on with doing some pattern stuff. And that's why if you look at what's going across the bottom, I wrote out treble crochet instead of the abbreviation for it in the fifth chain from hook and in each chain across and you'll have 25 stitches. That's that's our pattern. Now you'll see later on when I go to the next row, it might say TC for triple or for the treble crochet. And so that kind of familiarizes you with some of it. And as we get further into our patterns and our stitches, I'll be setting up the format for all of our patterns in the little uh, rolly script across the bottom. And hopefully that will familiarize you a little bit with um, getting a little bit better at reading those patterns. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Uh, she says, I have a cathedral window quilt my mom made. She started it the year I was born and finished it the year I graduated. My goodness. Wow. That's dedication right there. That is dedication. All right, friends. Here's row one. We are all done with that. I'm going to go ahead and change our banner to row two. So we can keep going because I'll just jabber jaw all day long if you let me. Row two. We're going to chain four. So one, two, three, four. And we're going to turn our work. Now, as we said earlier, this chain over here counted as our first stitch. This is our last treble crochet that we worked in our chain. So this chain four up is going to count as our first treble crochet in this row. Okay, so since that counts as our first treble crochet. Oh yes, Gwen, I've seen the one that are nothing but colored dots and lines and all that. Um, I They're not my favorite. I can eventually decipher them, but I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Okay, so again, this is counting as our first treble crochet. So we want to make sure we don't go into this first little stitch here. We've already done this one. So we're going to go into our next stitch right here. And we're going to complete the treble crochet. Again, making sure that you pick up both the front loop and the back loop of your stitch. You're going to yarn over and pull that yarn through so that you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And even though we've only worked one treble crochet in this row, we technically have two treble crochet because again, our chain four before we turn counts as our first one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a treble crochet and go all the way to the end here. And then we'll make sure that we've got 25 for row two. They are challenging, Nisi. They are um, challenging to read. I think it really depends on how much you love that pattern, whether you want to go through with actually reading it. I tell you what, friends, I've already got <laughs> some more things planned for some crochet. When we're done with this one, I found a beautiful pattern I would love to work on with all of you. I saw it and I thought, oh, gasp. Why didn't I see this one first? But, you know, it's a little difficult when you have like a little ADD thing here to not get distracted. I, I like the fact that I'm doing this with you, my friends, because it's going to keep me accountable. Because I have a terrible habit of starting and not finishing. So this is going to make sure that I finish all the way through with you and I don't pick up a new project as far as wanting to do a crochet along or bring you along with me, 
um, until I get this one done. It's going to be a commitment because I do love this afghan and I wanted one for myself since I made one for my best friend. And this is it. I've started it before. If you guys saw how many whips I have in the closet, <laughs> my work in progress. Oh, I've got some doozies in there. My goodness, I should, you know what I should do? <laughs> I should get into the closet and every week show you one of my whips and say, okay, this has been in the closet for four years. <laughs> I need to finish it. I've got one that I started for my granddaughter when she was little. And my goodness, I don't even know if I'll get it done before she graduates high school, but it's pretty darn cool. I just have to do it. You know, one of my problems is, is I, I get to where I start a project in the winter and then it's summer and it's too hot for me to keep working on it. And so it goes in the closet and then I find something else to work on. And I can't get more yarn to finish my project. So it goes in the closet. Or I see a squirrel and something goes in the closet. <laughs> I can't help it. Okay, let's see here. Nisi says, you went into this two-stitch after you turned like we did with the double crochet. Yes. Yes. So this was our first double crochet. This is chain four right here. Let me let me grab something else here. Here we go. So this was our last stitch right here. And then we chained four up. This actually technically becomes our first single crochet of the row. So we did our very first treble crochet in the next stitch. Not the same stitch, but in the next stitch. So that will be our treble crochet number two, and then we will work across. So um, as we do our blocks going forward, um, and I have, I've got it right there in our directions there, we're going to tre treble crochet in the next. So some of our instructions will say, you know, crochet one and turn and crochet in the first stitch. Or our instructions will, will say to do your single crochet or whatever stitch it is in the next stitch. So this one here for row two and beyond is always going to be, you're going to chain four and turn, and then you're going to treble crochet in the next stitch. So um, just keep that in mind as we go on this particular pattern. They will change up, and I will make sure that they are always in the banner down below for you. Uh, we had issues with um our our stream yard last week and so I don't think I I don't know if I had no I didn't I didn't have it scrolling across the bottom and I think I probably still need to go back to the live and put those instructions then in the description box I'll have to see if I need to do that don't anybody go check it's okay I'll check it Okay, so I've got two more here at the very end of row one. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do a treble crochet in my last true treble crochet that we did from round one. I'm going to count real quick because sometimes it looks a little deceiving here what I need to do. So here we go. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We know according to our pattern, I'm supposed to have 25. Remembering that this chain four counts as one. So I need one more. So I'm right where I need to be. I'm, it's, you know, it takes a little bit extra to count, but I tell you what, it's easier to count and make sure that you need one more than to get three rows up and realize that your work is looking wonky and you have to frog everything. So these are the four chains that we skipped when we were actually starting row one. So right here at the very top of these chain four, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do a treble crochet in the top chain. 
and sometimes they're a little hard to to get into. So I like to use my finger to push up against the chain so that that hook can go through easily. Doesn't matter if you catch just one loop or two loops. And we're going to yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. And there is row two. Look how quickly, just two rows. Remember for our single crochet block, our two rows was like right here. So we've got quite a bit already there. So just like before, let me change our banner. Hopefully you guys are done with row two with all of my yammering. And I'm gonna change our banner to our next instruction, which is, we're going to repeat row two until our block is approximately, now remember we discussed that when we first got started. You know what, let's take a look, see, shall we? Where's Country Mama at? After row two, where am I at? Look at that, just shy of eight inches. But let's do what I suggested earlier. Let me find my block that I'm going to use, kind of as my template to make sure that I'm right where I need to be with my gauge. Sometimes it's just nice to have a visual. And if I look, this is my first row of edging, right? Look at that, I'm kind of right in between those rows of edging. So I know that by the time I get my first row of edging on and then my second row of edging on, this one is going to be the same size as block number two. So this is, this is going exactly how I want it. Let me go back and make sure I'm not missing any comments there. So having checked that with my square two, I'm gonna continue on with my block here, following the same pattern that we had for row two. I'm going to chain four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to turn my work. And just like we discussed for the last row, according to our instructions for row two, do you guys want me to put row two back up? Are we good moving forward? According to our instructions, we're going to treble crochet in the next stitch. That's this one right here. This was our first stitch in our count because our chain four counts as that first treble crochet. So we're not going to go here. We're going to go in the next stitch right here. Let me hold this a little bit closer and hopefully that will. So we're not gonna go in this stitch. This is our first stitch. We're going to go into our next stitch with a treble crochet. So yarn over twice. We're gonna go into that stitch, again, making sure that we pick up both the front loop and the back loop. Yarn over, whoops. <laughs> yarn over and pull through. Slippery little suckers. I got four loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. There we go. Okay, it's been a little while since anybody has said anything to me. Can I get just a little thumbs up or something in the chat so I can make sure that I haven't lost you guys? Make sure that I'm not just sitting here talking to myself. I know everybody hopefully is crocheting along and doing well but I want to make sure I did not lose you guys. The last message I'm showing, oh good, Quinn, thank you. Just like to make sure that I haven't lost signal and I'm not just sitting here talking to myself while nobody's available to be here and everybody's saying, where'd she go? <laughs> as long as everybody's here and you guys are doing well, that's wonderful. So again, I'm just gonna crochet to the end with my treble crochets in every stitch across, making sure that when I get to the end, we have 25 treble crochets. And if you struggle with the treble crochet, I did put a tutorial up for the stitch for right-handed and left-handed crochet enthusiasts because uh, it, I'll show you what one thing I focused on 
in the tutorial is, you know, when you yarn over and go through this first loop, it goes through the first loop so easily, but because of the way it's wrapped and you get a little bit of a slant here on the second loop, sometimes it's difficult for your hook to go through and you kind of have to twist and manipulate it a little bit to catch it. Same with the second time you do it. You see how you have like a really nice firm loop and then you've got this little loose slanty little loop sometimes when you yarn over and try to go through both the first one goes through easily but the second one it requires just a little bit of finessing so uh, if you find that the treble crochet or any other stitch where you have to kind of finesse it if you need a little more uh, time with that make sure you practice that and I've got some uh, tips like I said in that tutorial One of which being I like to use my middle finger as I'm holding. Kind of like to push it. Push it way out. <laughs> and it just kind of helps me make sure I can finesse those loops over the hook. I have a question for you guys when you get to the end of your next row. I want to know how many in our crochet along hold their hook like a pencil and work like this? How many hold it like a pencil? And how many hold your hook like a knife? Like I do. I hold it like a knife. So imagine if this was a steak knife and you're and you're cutting food or do you hold it like a pencil as you work? Like if you were going to write like a pen. I want to know, do you hold like a pencil? Do you hold like a steak knife? I hold like a steak knife. This is the way I was taught. I cannot for the life of me crochet and hold it like a pencil. My brain doesn't work that way. Tamara, I'm still here periodically having some internet issue, hazards of living in the woods and having to use satellite. I understand, Tamara, and it might be that I'm glitchy on my end as well because I live in the middle of nowhere either. Oh, so Nisi holds it like I do, like a knife, and so does Gwen. That's good because I was worried, you know, if I do my tutorials and I hold my hook a specific way, I hope it doesn't throw people off. Um. I'm very happy that I was able to put the tutorials up in right-handed and left-handed format for those who need to follow along based on how they operate. All right. I know I'm at 24. I know I need to go into this chain up four because it counted as my first treble crochet, but because I'm a creature of habit, until I get a few rows in, I always like to double check. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, right where I need to be. So I know one more time I'm going to do a treble crochet in this chain four that counted as our first treble crochet. And Tamara holds it like a knife as well. Look at us. All of us knife holders. Two, three, four chain up. And we're going to turn our work and start working on row number four. Working again, not in your first stitch, in your next stitch. Right here. So here's our first stitch. I'm going to hold it up close. When you turn, this is your first stitch. You don't want to go there. You want to go into your next stitch to complete your first true treble crochet of this row. Your chain four up counting as your first treble crochet, even though we know it's just pretending. And a treble crochet in each stitch across. I'm going to say it again because I've heard from a few of you. I don't crochet at the same speed you do. I don't think I want to do the crochet along. Again, you go at your own speed. It's not a race. 
I'm not going to compare my speed to you. I don't want you to compare your speed to me. You might crochet faster than what I'm going. And you might be a little bit more precise with your stitches and be a little bit behind where I am. And that's perfectly, perfectly fine. This is for you. It is not a race. Just remember, you can go back later, rewatch, hit the replay. You can get where you need to be. And then if you miss something, you can catch it. Ooh, I got yarn barf. I went to go pull out some yarn and I got just a tiny little bit of yarn barf. Let's see. Um, have you created a separate playlist for the Cal live streams? I've not for the live streams. I did start a playlist for the crochet along. So the tutorials and the, I'll check that when we're done to make sure everything's going over. Um, I can do it separate for the lives. If you want just the lives in one playlist. Um, I was hashtagging everything with our hashtag and throwing it all over into one list as best I can. Um, I will double check that when we're done and make sure everything is there. I'm hoping to use this as a form of therapy, Tamara says, recovering from a stroke. Bright side is I am ambidextrous. Well, I hope that this is beneficial for you, Tamara. I think it is a wonderful activity um, as a therapy, keeping in mind that don't allow yourself to get frustrated and um, see it as a challenge to overcome and continue moving forward. I think that is wonderful. And ambidextrous, that's wonderful too. I cannot crochet right-handed. But through the magic of technology, I can put my tutorials up, <laughs> left-handed and right-handed. And one thing I'm thinking of doing, guys, is when we have our lives like this, and they're available to go back and look, um, I'm thinking later I might do an abbreviated version and just have it as a video, um, a little more clear and concise and maybe not an hour long for each one and then you know I'll put those up way later and that way it's just kind of there because you know there are going to be people I'm hoping that are going to want to do a crochet along if they come across some of our videos and maybe they don't want to listen to me yammer on for an hour while I chit chat with my friends but they might end up coming over to your channel or they might say, I don't know these people and I don't know who she's talking to, so I'm not going to do this. <laughs> we'll have to see. Sorry, that was what I meant. I'll be doing a majority review. Oh, a monthly review of the blocks I did for the crochet along and I want to tag the playlist. Yes, there is a playlist. Whether I've followed up appropriately, <laughs> let me check on that. I'm still learning about playlists. Like I just put a video up for a collaboration and I want to make sure it goes over into that person's playlist, but I don't know if it has. Um, at Tamara, crochet is my therapy to help with my autism. Okay, let's see where we're at here. I know that this is my last true treble crochet of the prior row. I'm going to put one in there. And I already know I have to put one in right here in my pretend treble. Trouble without a cause. I'd say four rows in, we're almost halfway done with our block. Look at that. There we go, 25. You know, uh, the first couple of times that we came live on here and we had issues with the camera and um, so many of you were trying to help me saying, turn this and do that. And I got to tell you, boy, it is a setup. Nisi knows she uh, did a video where she was showing one of her blocks and it's so different when you do it through StreamYard. So if you ever do it through StreamYard, just know that there are settings in StreamYard where you can set it up to use your rear camera. But boy, it's a process. It is a process to set it all up. I actually have it written down on an index card, step by step by step, what I have to do. And it has to be in just that order or you don't get the horizontal view, you get the portrait view. 
Um, it won't do your front camera. It'll do your, or it won't do your back camera. It does a front camera. Oh my goodness. So many steps to complete. But I think I finally got it. Now, sometimes it's just the sound issues I have to work with. So we're going to chain four and turn and go to row five. Again, not working in our first stitch, but working in the next stitch. Treble crochet in that stitch and every stitch across. You know, I like that for this particular block, my color A is white because as I look at this come together, oh my goodness, Nisi and friends, I love this thought that just popped into my head. <laughs> Because, you know, we've got our little puff stitch coming up. I don't know off the top of my head, based on my color selection, what color those are going to be. But like I said, I'll never stop thinking of them as little cabbages. And look, this reminds me of a little picket fence. It's almost like it's going to be a gardening blanket for me. Because here I have the little garden fence and then somewhere in my blanket somewhere in my afghan I'm going to have a bunch of little cabbages in a row oh will we be able to come up with some fun things for the other blocks I don't know but I love how this is looking like a little picket fence that just popped into my brain if I had enough things to work with it I could almost call this like McGregor's afghan like Peter Cottontail that was in Old Farmer McGregor. Is that who it was? McGregor's Garden. The old farmer that Peter Cottontail kept going into his yard and getting into the garden. You know, I would be willing to bet that we'll have somewhere coming up <laughs> a, a pattern that will have like a star pattern. We can call it like carrot tops. Yes, Gwen, yours is going to be one color all the way through completely ecru. It's going to be beautiful. Good morning, Miss Gail. How are you? Welcome. I'm glad you're here. It does look like a picket fence, doesn't it? <laughs> I love that, Nisi, how that just came to me. Picket fence and cabbages. And then when we do our uh, a star pattern, we can say that they're the tops to little carrots. Oh my goodness. And if we have any type of a spike pattern at all, we can say those are the carrots themselves. Oh, we're going to have fun. You guys, let's do that. Each square, if you guys see something as we're doing each block, if that's how your brain works, that's how my brain works. I see things that aren't really there. So for, you know, most people, this is just a row of treble crochet. For me and the way my brain works, it just popped in there. Oh my goodness, picket fence. This is going to be my picket fence block. Peter Cottontail is not welcome in my garden. <laughs> Reminds you of a helix ladder. Ooh, hey, let's talk science. There we go. One, two, three, four, five rows. And we're just going to keep on going until we end up with our perfect square. I'm not to the point yet where I want to uh, try to see how close I am to a perfect square because I know I'm nowhere close there. Gail says she planted tomatoes, basil, and zinnias yesterday. Oh, how lovely. Gail, do you know what? I got snow last night. I'm so glad that there's nothing outside because we have snow into our, not our first stitch, but our next stitch going through both the front and back loop. We're going to start our treble crochets across our next row, making sure we have 25. So Gwen says, I was on a live trivia last night. The question was, how many squirts it takes to make a gallon of milk? Oh, my goodness, Gwen. What was the answer? That's funny. Oh, my goodness. 
I, I really want to say it depends on how proficient you are at milking because not everyone's squirts are equal depending on your Tate technique. This coming from a girl that used to get up every morning at 4.30 and milk the cows. Um, Nisi says one thing for sure. We will all get to know each other really well by the time we are done with this Afghan. That's very true, Nisi. Very true. Someone said, who counts that? Me. I count while milking. Why? No clue. It just happens. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, you know, I think back when I was um, 13, 14, up until I was 15, and I used to have to get up in the morning and milk the cows. I saw it as what it truly was, a chore. Because, you know, milking in the mornings was my responsibility. If I did it in the evenings as well, it was kind of a bonus to help my mom and dad. But milking in the morning, that was my deal. And I would get up at 430. And I would run down to the barn and I would get the first cow in her stanchion. And uh, we had a one legged stool. And I would position myself on that one legged stool and you would just balance and pivot on that one legged stool. And I would lean my head up into her flank and I would milk her and then I'd switch sides and get the other two. And then I would uh, take her out. She was a Guernsey and I'd take her out and I'd replace her with the whole stain that we had. And I would milk those two cows. I'd uh, carry the milk up into the, to the milk barn and I would strain it through the cheesecloth into uh, the gallon pitchers that we had. And then I would put it into the refrigerator that was down in the milk house. I'd run up to the house freezing most times because we, did, we lived up in the mountains. Oh, good. Here comes more yarn barf. Um, and I would make myself a bowl of cereal. This is before I would fully get dressed for school. I was just in my chore clothes. And I would take my bowl of cereal and I'd run into the bathroom and I would put the seat, the lid down on the toilet and sit on top of the toilet and eat my cereal, which sounds terrible. But <laughs> let me explain. Um, did I get my ice cream yesterday? I don't think I got ice cream yesterday. Gail, was I supposed to get ice cream? I'm lost. I don't know if I said something or if this is an inside thing. I don't know. Anyways, uh, we did not have heat in our home other than the wood-burning potbelly stove, which would usually go out in the middle of the night. My dad wouldn't feed it once we'd gone to bed. So, I mean, that was the rare occasion that that potbelly stove was going. But we had one of those little electrical coil heaters that the bathrooms had like back in the 50s. Ice cream is a code word. I don't know what it is. You'll have to chat me privately. I don't know, Gail. If it's something that would have come in the mail, I didn't. I don't go to the post office until Fridays. So if that's what it is, then no, I don't know. But we had this little heater, and the little heater, you know, like in those older homes in the 40s and 50s, it always had a heater right there next to the toilet on the wall in the bathroom. And so I would take my cereal in there, and I would turn that little heater on, and all the coils would turn red, and it would radiate that heat. And I, that's where I would sit and have my breakfast in the mornings, because the rest of the house was too cold. And um, I know some people say, it must have really been cold for you to want to sit on the toilet to eat your cereal. When I would wake up in the mornings, I had frost on the inside of my windows in the bedroom. So it was cold. I would sleep under a pile of blankets and wake up and there would be frost all inside the room on the windows and stuff. And then I'd have to run down and milk those cows. Going to chain four and turn and work on my next row. Not working in our first stitch, but working in our next stitch, treble crochet, and working across for another row. So yes, Gail, I'm going to have to find out what that is. Good morning, Ann Dale. Popping in to say hi and hit that like button. Thank you. I appreciate that. I hope you're doing well. How is our uh, boxing champ? Ooh, I saw that video. Ann Dale. She, she 
kicking some garden and booty and taking names. Boy, she had a workout in her garden the other day. She's serious. She is serious about her uh, gardening challenge that she is in. If somebody wouldn't have pointed out to me, hey, you know, that's sweet. And Dale, I would have said no. And Dale is fierce. Boy, she's got some box and moves. I was quite impressed. And whoops, cannot seem to catch that yarn to save my life there. Some of us box in our gardens. Some of us try to wrangle yarn. <laughs> Today I'm trying to wrangle yarn with you. You, and it looked like you had fun. That was a fun video. It really looked like you were having a great time. I laughed. And I was thinking better her than me. Because boy, oh boy, if I, if I did that much activity in my garden like that, I think I'd be setting off some Richter scales somewhere. I'd be flopping, <laughs> flopping and shaking. Girl, you are in shape. And as I say that, I have to remind myself that round is a shape as well. I did hop on the scale this morning. Miss Ann don't play in the garden. No, she didn't play. She was serious. She was putting it down. Competition better watch out on that, on that challenge. She got it going on. Anyways, I stepped on the scale this morning. Down a little bit more every day. I'm weighing a little less and my scale can breathe a little easier. <laughs> All right, so that is the treble crochet, my last true treble crochet from the prior row. And I know I'm going to do a treble crochet in our chain four right here that is our faux treble crochet from the prior row. So we're just going to do one right there, keeping our rows nice and even with 25 stitches. Oh, yes, Miss Andale, I laughed. I had a good chortle. I did not LOL. I COL'd. I chortled out loud because it was from the gut I was laughing and it was a good laugh I was not laughing at you I was laughing with you it was great two three four we're going to turn our work and just like all of our previous rows I'm going to work across all the way to the end with treble crochets starting in the next stitch not the first one Miss Anne, I was telling everybody in the chat earlier, I'm so glad I don't have anything in my garden yet because we got snow last night. We didn't get a lot, but we got snow. I was surprised. I mean, I knew they said we were getting snow on Wednesday. I knew that that was in the forecast. And when I got up in the middle of the night to let the dogs out, there were just these tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny little flurry flakes that you could barely see. And I thought, oh, we're not going to get much at all. And then when I got up this morning and I walked out into the kitchen, everything was bright. Whoa! And it was bright because everything is white outside, <laughs> reflecting in through the window. And everything is covered in snow. But as I look outside right now and try not to be distracted by a squirrel, I see that it's already kind of melted off of the very tippy tops of the trees that I can see from where I'm sitting. But uh, I did look out the window and I saw my turkeys and my chickens and they're all walking around going like, what is this mess? Who ordered this? They were not happy. But you know, one thing I love seeing when I look out now at all of my coop kids is my turkeys, my, my Tom turkeys. I have three Toms. And, oh, they're just in full strut. They love walking around strutting. You can see me melting away. <laughs> I've got a little bit more melting to do. I do have a little bit more melting to do. But I do want to keep some padding. 
You know, I always say I was born in the wrong time period. Because if you look back at the Renaissance time and the time when they had all of those beautiful paintings, look at the women. Look at all those those paintings of the women with the cherubs and stuff. Those women, they were pillowy and fluffy. I'm pillowy and fluffy. And they had very fair skin and I'm fair skinned. I don't tan. I sunburn and then I freckle. I don't tan. So very fair skin and nice and fluffy. I should have been born in that time frame. But here I am and I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I would have fit in a little bit better. But, you know, during those times, if they had a time of uh, poor crops or famine, you wanted your wife to have a little extra meat on her because, you know, she was going to survive the famine. Uh, we got three, three and three quarters inches of rain early Monday, says Gwen. And Miss Ann says, oh, man, snow. I did put out a few potted plants. We'll have to bring them in this weekend. Another cold front, but no snow. That's good. No snow. Oh, Nisi had two plump wild turkeys in her pasture yesterday morning. Yes, absolutely, Nisi. Back then, the thin women were looked on as being sickly and not good for bearing children. This mom has got childbearing hips, I tell you. All right, so I've got row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows of picket fences for our little McGregor garden. I'm going to say I'm going to do at least one more row, and then we'll fold it over and see where we're at. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. I'm going to chain up four. One, two, three, four, and turn. Yours is square at seven rows. See how it's different for everybody? I know I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. So I'm going to treble crochet in my next chain. Sorry, in my next stitch, not chain. You know what I meant. And in every stitch across. Whoops, that was not a treble crochet. Saw a squirrel. This is my treble crochet right there. I wonder if I would not have caught it if you guys would have caught that and said, Hey, country mama, go back and fix that boo boo. I caught it though. Oh, Gwen, you wouldn't have been a spinster. We're all beautifully and wonderfully unique and there's always somebody out there that's appreciative for who you are inside and out. I always say, uh, I know I'm good as long as my husband comes home. I may, I may have had my weight go up pretty, pretty steadily after chemotherapy, but Papa Jim still came home. That's what mattered. And if he got to the point where he wouldn't come home, then he doesn't deserve me. But he's never been that way. That's a rabbit hole we could go down, but we won't. But I've got a good man. And he's literally been with me through thick and thin. Had my very thin days, and I've had my days where you sheepishly have to ask for an extender for your seatbelt on the airplane. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was embarrassing. But you know, I, I finished my chemotherapy and I'd lost so much weight during chemo that I would go back for my checkups, my follow ups after I was done with my last treatment. And the nurse would weigh me and she'd go, Oh, you. Gained seven pounds this week. And I was just mortified. Oh my gosh, I gained seven. Seven 
pounds in a week. And the oncologist would say, this is good. <laughs> we want you to gain weight. I was like, why? And she says, well, because should you ever have a recurrence, you've got that weight stored so that if you have to do chemotherapy again, you can lose it. You can afford to lose it. So they were always happy every time I'd show up and gain weight. It's the first time I've ever had a doctor happy that I gained weight. <laughs> but now I have to tighten things up because of the second diagnosis of diabetes. But I uh, was on a live recording last night for Round the Hay Bale, the podcast that I participate in. And my internet froze. And... I got a great picture of me looking up at my microphone and it I've got a long, beautifully long neck without a double chin. And it looks like I'm singing. I think it's great. I'm thinking I'm going to put it up and have people caption. What song do you think I'm singing when really I'm not singing at all? <laughs> okay. So let's check here. I'm going to say I might be able to do this in one more row. I might have very, very close to having my perfect square and how I determine that is, and you guys know this if you've been uh, in our other blocks, but for those who are new, I fold my block over to make a triangle. And once it meets up perfectly, then I know I've got a true square. I'm not quite there yet. I'm gonna do one more row. So I've chained up four. I'm going to skip my first stitch. I'm going to go to the next stitch and do a treble crochet. And I'm going to do a treble crochet in every row across, just like we've done since row two. So I do want to. Uh, let you guys know if you haven't seen it yet i posted a video yesterday that was a call to action not the live so much the live was a different call to action well no it wasn't it was the same one it just looks different based on how youtube presents it but um i went ahead and i signed up to be a volunteer yesterday for the Be My Eyes app. I don't know if you were able to see that. I am so excited about that. I showed it to Papa Jim when he got home last night. And I said, isn't this an amazing thing? And he agreed. He said, that is just absolutely amazing. I'm so looking forward to actually being able to implement that. So for those of you who didn't see it, please go over and see that video. But I'll give you the gist of what it is. There's an app that's available on your smartphone where if you're so inclined, you can uh, download the app and become a volunteer for a program called Be My Eyes. And what it is, is when there's a sight impaired or blind person that needs assistance with something, they can contact you on their phone. And when your phone alerts, it's a push notification. When it alerts and you open that push notification, it connects you to the phone camera for them and they can say I need assistance uh, getting across an intersection or where am I I need to find a place to sit down or I'm at the store and I don't know if I've grabbed the right uh, kitty kibble whatever and you can see through the phone and you can say you know what what you want is to the left of you or what you want is the next row down and you can assist them till they find what they want or what they need help with they may say I'm going out and I want to wear a red cardigan, but I have two cardigans that feel the same, but I don't know which one's my red one that my mother bought me and which one's my black one that my mother bought me. I want to wear the red one. And you can say uh, your red one is to your left and they can touch it. You can say, that's it. That's the one you want. And they'll say, okay, thank you. And that's it. That's the end of the call. And so you're assisting sight impaired or blind people with just some very simple tasks that maybe they don't have someone to assist them with that. And it's just really a great program. You saw that, Anne. Isn't that wonderful? I was so thrilled to learn about that. And I signed up. And uh, it might take a little while before I get my first call because there are so many volunteers now. But I'm excited. And I'm ready, willing, and able. My mother was sight impaired. And I think this is just a wonderful thing to carry on in her honor. 
to be of assistance uh, to others. And being out here on the farm, you don't get to be of service a lot of the time. And this is a great way for me to help someone. I just think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So if you've not seen that video, please go check it out. I just uploaded it last night. I probably should spread things out a little bit because I had a video hit yesterday morning for the canning collaboration. Then I did a live and then I threw the call to action one out in the evening. <laughs> it's like I just kind of flooded everybody's timeline with videos. I should have spread it out a little bit, but I was so excited about it. I had to get it out. I had to. And of course, in that video, I put a couple pictures of my, my mama. I miss her so much. Okay, I'm pretty certain I'm square on my little Farmer McGregor picket fence. That's what I'm going to call this one, guys, from now on. I'm telling you. I'm going to take this corner. I'm going to fold it down over to this corner. I know that's kind of taken up the whole screen there, isn't it? I'm going to see just how square I am. How close am I to having a true square? And look at that. Ladies, it doesn't get much better than that. Look at that. I have my square. I'm done with my rows of treble crochet and I'm ready to move on to do round one of my edging. It is neat. It's so neat. Gwen, I've got all the information in the video. If you want to check it out, if you know somebody who might want to do it, it's a it doesn't cost anything to download the application. It is free to the volunteers and it is free to the sight impaired or blind community that want to participate. So it is a free service. Uh, your your uh, privacy is protected because it's a push notification. So that means nobody ever has your phone number. I never even provided my phone number. I only provided my email. So the push notification comes through your email and connects you to their phone. So there's no privacy issues. I think it's really, really a neat, neat thing. All right, guys, I'm going to change my banner to row one of our edging. Mm -hmm. And I think, oh, here it is. I found it. Okay. So for row one of our edging, what we are going to do let me wait for this to scroll across. I'm pretty sure I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to turn my work. And I'm going to... Now, I didn't do this banner right, so just know it says work three single crochet in the first single crochet. That's not accurate. You're going to work three single crochet in your first stitch right here. It would have been your last treble crochet. I updated that wrong. Um, and let me fix that because I want to make sure I can fix that. I'm going to edit it. There we go. Now it should be proper. So we're going to chain one and turn, which is what I did. And we're going to work three single crochet in our first stitch, which was the very last treble crochet we worked. So one single crochet, two single crochet, and three single crochet. There we go. Now what we want to do is we want to work 25 single crochet across all the way over to here. Now we have 25 stitches total already. We've just used one up to do a corner. We're going to use another one up to do the corner here, which means we only have 23 stitches in between. So partway through, we're going to have to put in an extra single crochet. And partway through again, we're going to have to put in another single crochet. Let me go back to my comments, make sure I'm not missing anything. Well, hello. Hello, Glenda. I'm going to ask my hubby's team, yes, the VIST team at the VA, if they know about that program for Be My Eyes. I think that's wonderful. And I thank you so much for wanting to share that with them. I'm, I'm so, if you couldn't tell from my video last night, Glenda, I was just thrilled about the whole process. I wish I had known about it sooner. Uh, it's been in um, 
in and around for the last, I don't know, at least five years. And I never knew about it. I would have been volunteering this whole time if I would have known about that. So moving on, we've got our three single crochets in the corner and we wanna work 25 single crochets as cross. Again, we're gonna to have to double up somewhere, but let's get started on that. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now let me warn you, don't do your single crochets too tight. These are pretty loose. If you do them too tight, you might get a little bit bunchy. And I lost count. One, two. One, two. My goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, Nine, I'm going to put my tenth one right there. Ten, same stitch. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. 18, 19, I'm going to put 20 in that same stitch there, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now I want to go to the top chain of this faux treble crochet from the prior row and I'm going to put three single crochet at the top of that and that's going to make our next corner. So one, two, and three. So across the very top of our work we have a corner that we've worked right here. We've worked 25 single crochet across and we've got our second corner right here. And we're going to rotate our work like so. And we're going to work along the side of our work now. Now, same thing that we did for our top row. We want to um, accomplish across our side row. And this is something that we were discussing earlier. We don't have true stitches to work in. We're just going to have these little gaps to work in. And we want to get 25 single crochet evenly spaced across the gaps until we get to this corner. And so Glenda says, I never knew about it. And uh, her husband is legally blind and she didn't even know that that was an app that was out there. I think it's just amazing. I love it. So let me grab my little stitch marker here. And I'm going to fold my square in half. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just going to give me a reference. And right about where my half mark is, I'm going to put that little stitch marker. And so I know that that's halfway and I either need to have 12 or 13 single crochet in this span and then 12 or 13 single crochet in that span so that I end up with 25 when I get to my corner. So one, two, three, four, five. If I want, I'm gonna say I'm gonna do probably in groups of if I did three, 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 that's 12. So I can go two, three, two, three, that's 10, and then two, that makes 12. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do two of them here, three of them here, two of them here, three of them here, two of them here. That's what I'm going to do. So working in this space, I'm gonna do two single crochet in that space, one and two. Then I'm going to go to this next space and I'm going to do three single crochet. One, two, three. That makes five. I'm going to do two here. Six, seven. I'm going to do three here. Eight, nine, ten, eleven and 12. So I have 12 at my halfway point. 
And then I'm just going to try to just smooth that out. And again, we're going to get little filigree look on the side of our lock. I'm going to remove my stitch marker now because it has served its purpose. There we go. And I know that for the rest of this side, I need to get 13 here before I get to the corner. So I did two here. That was 12. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put another one in this space. So I'm going to count it as 13. Now, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and two more right here in this last one, 24, 25. So I've got my 25 single crochet evenly spaced across side one of our block. And look at these cute little arches. Oh my gosh, we've got our picket fence and we've got little, little um, arches, little trellis arches <laughs> in our McGregor's garden. Isn't that fun? Let's see, checking on my chats there. Okay, this is our tail from our beginning chain when we started our block. I cannot stress to you enough, make sure you leave yourself enough of a tail that you could either work back in and then sew in or sew in when you're done. I was actually watching a pattern the other day and I'm not kidding, I've got to show you. There was a woman that was going to start a project and she did her slip knot. She did her slip knot like this. That was her slip knot. She left herself that much tail. And she was doing quite a project. And I thought, oh my goodness, that is not going to stay. That's not going to stay. Because you know what she was doing with that project? She was chaining four and then slip stitching into her first chain to make a loop so she could do like a granny square. I thought that is going to come out. She's going to be sorry because she's going to do all that work and there's nothing to secure that. Not even enough to sew back in. And, and even if she crocheted over it, she's asking for trouble. Don't do that to yourself. When I first started crocheting, I did that because I wanted to stretch my yarn out as far as I could. Um, and I, I had some things come undone. You have to leave yourself a really nice long tail. And then sew it in and then cut it off if you need to. But don't start short. Don't sell yourself short to begin with. So right here is our very first chain from our beginning chain. And I'm just going to do three single crochet in there. One, two, three. And again, it is a personal preference what you like to do. You can you can crochet over your cha your tail if you'd like to at this point. Um, it, sometimes it just depends on the mood I'm in. Sometimes I'll crochet over a little bit and I'll throw it to the back knowing that I want to catch up with it and uh, sew it in later. Sometimes I just tuck it to the back and I don't even worry about it. But we're going to do 25. Again, that's your personal preference. There's no right way, no wrong way. It's how you like to do things. I'm going to do 25 single crochet right here here's my corner one this is my first faux I want to make sure that I leave that for my corner so I'm going to do 25 across and I know I'm going to have to put in a double uh, single crochet I shouldn't say a double single crochet I know I'm going to have to put two single crochets in a single stitch twice as I go across so that I end up with 25 so here we go one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm going to put my second one there. That makes eleven. 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We'll go in that same stitch again so I can get 21. 22, 23, I'm a little bit short, that's okay. I'm gonna put two here, 24, 25, that's okay. There we go, there's 25 across. I'm gonna go to our faux treble crochet and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put in our corner. So three single crochet here, one, two, three, and turn our work. Rotate it, not turn it. Rotating our work around. So we have one corner here, our second corner all the way down here, worked across the side, third corner here, worked across the bottom of our work, and we've got our fourth corner here. And now all we have to do for this row of our edging, for this round of our edging, we're going to do the same thing that we did for the other side. We're going to fold this in half. And it doesn't have to be exact. We're going to find the reference area right here. Open that up. I'm going to put a stitch marker there just to keep my place so I know where my halfway is. I've got these spaces to work in. If I did 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13. If I did that pattern again, I'll end right here with 13. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into this space and do two single crochet here. It's very close to my three corner. That's why I'm just going to do two. I'm going to do three in this one. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I was looking at chat. I may be off a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirteen. I've got thirteen there with our little trellis scallops for our garden fence. I'm going to take my stitch marker out. Somebody give me a thumbs up in the chat so I know you're still there. It's been a while. I know you guys are crocheting. I wanna make sure I haven't lost you. So I'm at 13 right here. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25. So we've worked all the way across making all of these beautiful little scallop lacy edges. And we're at 25. We're going to slip stitch into the first single crochet of our row. And that closes off round one of our edging, not row, round one of our edging. Okay. Thank you guys for letting me know you're still there. I appreciate it. I know it's because you guys are busy, but then sometimes I wonder if I've lost my internet. It concerns me. Okay. I thought I switched out my banner. Let's see here. Okay, here is row two for our border that we're working on. We're going to just kind of slip stitch over into right here. Let's slip stitch into the corner. And we're gonna work, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, just put a chain there so it secures it where we're at. We're gonna put three single crochet 
I was up at two in the morning putting these in. I might have put my instructions wrong. Uh, with color, okay, work three single crochet in the corner. So there's two, three single crochet in our corner. And we're going to work 27 across to our next corner. So 27 single crochet. We shouldn't have to double up anywhere here. We should be good. One, two, three, four, Twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven. So there's twenty seven equally evenly spaced single crochet across the top of our work. And now what we want to do is we want to work three single crochet in the corner. One. Two, three, and this creates a nice little rounded corner. We're going to rotate our work. And we don't have to worry about folding in half and finding where our spaces are because we should have 27 single crochet across to the next corner. So we're just going to work a single crochet in every single crochet across. I'm going to count quietly to myself so I don't throw your stitch count off. Twenty-seven. Now, because I am a tight crocheter, and I know that Nancy is a tight crocheter, make sure when you do these single crochet that you allow yourself to relax a little bit on your tension. You don't want this bunching up on you, and you don't want it curling. So there's twenty-seven, and I'm at my next corner. I'm going to put three single crochet in my next stitch here at the corner. So it creates another corner for me. One. Two, three, and I'm going to rotate my work, work along this next row here, and I'm going to quietly count 27 to myself so I don't throw your stitch count off.
Inhale, 27. So there's 27. And you can see, even though I'm trying to be loose, I'm a little bit tight. All right. I'm going to work three. I keep hitting my head on my microphone. I'm going to hit. I'm going to put three single crochet in the corner to make our last corner. One, two, three. And again, I'm going to work 27 single crochet across and meet up at our very first corner. Twenty-five, twenty-six, and twenty-seven. I'm going to find my first single crochet right here. I'm going to slip stitch. I'm going to go through both the front loop and the back loop on that stitch. Grab my yarn and pull it through. And I'm going to pull it through the loop that's on my hook. I'm not going to yarn over it. And that's our slip stitch to close off that round of our border. I'm going to chain two, and then I'm going to find my little scissors here because we're done with our block. I know we're missing Lisa. Lisa uh, and I and Monica and uh, Casey, we were up late last night recording for a podcast, so she might be sleeping in. I don't know. Um, I think she also had a live. I think she was going to be in a live today, someone's live. So um, I'm glad that the replay will be there so she can get caught up. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to give myself a light and nice long tail here. I'm going to snip that off. I'm going to pull my yarn through. I'm going to pinch right above these two little chains. I'm going to give this a really nice firm tug. And that's going to be a knot that is not going to come out. Set my hook aside. And here we have block number four. And it's our little picket fence block. Again, we've got the cute little arch little filigrees on the side. Let me stick something underneath here so you can see how cute they are. And, you know, as over time, these will even out. It'll be lovely. And again, if somebody wants to critique your work on the filigree on the side, they don't even be looking so close. Now, just because of the nature of the beast, this one might be a little tiny little bit bigger. But really, it's not much. By the time you kind of put everything into shape, I think we're pretty darn good. I think we're pretty close with that to measuring up to square two. I mean, it's it's minuscule, the difference. I think we're okay there. So we have square one, square two, square three, and square four. You can see the difference in all of them with all of these fun stitches. So this was our single crochet, nice and tight. Try to crochet it loosely if you can. This was our half double crochet, beautiful pattern. This is our, oops, got something on there. This is our double crochet. Again, a little bit more of the spaces in between. And this is our treble crochet, which looks like a beautiful picket fence to me. 
So there's our four squares. And like I said earlier, we will be working on the same color next week. Yours is a half an inch taller than the other blocks. If it's only a half an inch, I wouldn't worry about it because it's going to work out when you sew. The, the, here's the key thing. The key thing is between your corners on each one, you've got 25 single crochet. So let me see, let's see, right? Let me grab this one here. So this block is just a teeny, teeny little bit bigger than this block, just a little bit. But when we sew them together, we're gonna have the same amount of single crochet stitches in between, and that's going to level them out. It's going to make it all nice and neat. And when you sew or crochet, we haven't decided yet. Um, I have to look at some of my things and I have to decide if I want to have you guys sew these, whip stitch them together or crochet them together with a slip stitch. I kind of want to do something different with this one than I did with the last one. And I'm still kind of working on that. But again, you're going to get to your corner here when you sew them. And as long as you still have the same amount across here, it's going to even it all out. So even if one's a little bit taller, it's going to fit together perfectly. So I don't want you to worry about that. What I want you to concentrate on more is just, are they relatively close? I'm sure if I line this one up with the bottom of here, I mean, I've probably got maybe a quarter of an inch there. So mine are gonna be different too. Matter of fact, if I put it up with my, um, if I put my treble crochet up against my single crochet, you're gonna see I've got a gap too, okay? But don't worry about it because again, when we sew these together, that's what's gonna happen there. It's gonna give it just a little bit of a tug. And when we come here, you're going to line those up. It's going to give a little bit of a tug and, and all the way across. So eventually this lovely little single crochet is going to pull out and it's going to look fine by the time you sew it all together. It's just going to force these stitches to stretch out a little bit. You'll be fine. All right. Yes, it will be fine because once finished, you'll wash it and it will, it will, it will all come together. It will all come together. So, and it'll soften up. So that's nice too. All right, friends, let's see. What can I do here? Did everybody survive? <laughs> oh my goodness. How did we do on block number four? Don't I look like I've been up to since two in the morning or up until two in the morning? And then I woke up at about 6.30 to come upstairs. My coffee's cold, but I'm still going to finish it and enjoy it before I go down downstairs and do another cup. And then I've got some editing to do. I'm going to do um, the tutorial for the very, very beginner for learning how to do two different ways to do a slip knot and then working on your chain. So I'll put that up so that uh, Casey over at Ormsby Farm, he says he really wants to get in on this. The string you're using is starched. It's a weird stuff. Ooh. Interesting. I, I'll be very interested to see. For those of you who have Instagram, um, put your blocks up. Or if you have a community page, put your blocks up. Make sure you use our hashtag, hashtag heirloom Afghan C A L. And um, that way, anytime anybody searches it, all of these lovely things will come up. People can see what we're doing. And then maybe we'll get more interested parties and people will grab their hooks and they'll get caught up and join us. So, um, we managed to go almost two hours. I didn't think it would take us two hours, but I just keep on walking. I keep talking. I'm still working on mine. I've got to get ready for my live. Okay, Nisi, you do that. Have a good day, Tamara. I am so thankful that you were able to join us, Tamara. And I hope to see you again next week. And keep an eye out, guys, because the tutorial will be coming up. I'm going to try to drop it on Sunday for our next one. And the next one is going to involve, like I said, this is the last time we're going to do something that is our basic, basic stitch. So next week, we're going to be doing stitches that alternate between the front loop of a stitch. Let me get this up here. They're going to alternate between working our rows, front stitch, or I'm sorry, front loop, back loop, front loop, back loop, front loop, back loop. And it's going to give us this little textured look to our piece that's fine that's fine Gwen um, but if you've got them share them if if you've got other ways to share it then share it and let's see if we can get some more friends to join us but um, I'm just looking for more friends who want to crochet with us 
So everybody have a great day. I'm going to get editing some videos. Everybody head on over to Nisi. She's got a live today. And um, I will be putting those tutorials up and I will see you all next week. No uh, Country Mama Quickie this Monday night, but Papa Jim and I are coming together on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock to stuff our pinata for our trip that we'll be taking. So that's always a lot of fun. And if you didn't see last week, we added somebody to our crime investigation team. I'll show you real quick. Y'all know we're going on a murder mystery and we're going to be dressing up like barbecue chefs for our murder mystery. And we've got our wiener dog, Colonel Mustard. He is our canine unit. And we decided that for our canine unit, we might need a little help because we don't know what type of a murder mystery this is. What if we need some military police? So we've got our alligator here. He's our military police. And I'm going to crochet him a vest because then he will be our investigator. You get it? <laughs> so we're going to go into a town that we don't frequent very often. And we're, these guys are going to be on leashes. Where, where's the camera? There we go. These guys are going to be on leashes. So this is our canine unit and this is our investigator. And we're going to go on a murder mystery. So much fun. All right. You're welcome, Grant. Thank you so much for joining us. I will talk to you guys soon. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye. I need more coffee.